Hey, Dr. Medea here with hashtag live surgery Tuesday. Today we have a manual worker. You see a big, big heavy hand. He had a work injury uh, some months ago and has had persistent pain at the base of the thumb. X-rays are relatively normal, but in my experience, these folks have a ligament injury and there's really no way to diagnose this. MRIs are a waste of time and, and money, frankly. Uh, so once conservative treatments fail, so I'm going to put the camera in, and we will see what we have. Lights off. Lights off, yep. So that's a bubble. So right away, I can see this is synovitis. So now all that inflammation there. See, there's no, there's no arthritis here. Look at the, the joints. Look how pretty that looks. I have a million patients who would love to have a joint like this. Okay. All right. And for the, the hand surgeons, this is the volar oblique ligament. You can see it going this way. And now we're going to look this way, and we're seeing even more synovitis and some loosening of the ligament. So what we're going to do is probably tighten that up. All right. And through two little holes, we're going to resolve this, this guy's problem. Okay. So let's uh, get an 18 gauge. Now we're going to create another portal. So this is almost a phenar portal, which was described by uh, my colleague uh, Orellana about 15 years ago. So a lot of what I'm doing here is not totally new, but it is still a technology that's really underutilized for reasons that are a little unclear to me. but. That's for another discussion. Okay, so. Okay, so this is a two millimeter shaver. Uh, yeah, a little fast would be good, but I'm gonna take my first picture because I want to show the patient. My experience, the most important part is once I do this synovectomy or removal of the inflamed synovium, then I tighten it and it will have him in a cast for a few weeks just to let these ligaments tighten a little bit. Then he'll do a little bit of hand therapy and that should be it. Dr. Bdia, if you could explain okay. what each portal What's going on in each portal with the well, tools that you're holding? Well, this camera. It's a 1.9 millimeter camera, so it's not something you're going to hear about much. Um, really only, no pun intended, but only a handful of my colleagues really, I think, do a lot with that small camera. I think there's a lot of potential. Uh, I've been doing it for 25 years, so it's not you, but um, for whatever reason, it's still not a commonly done procedure. But that is a small camera in there. It's a 30 degree camera. So if I want to look the other way, I, I'll swivel the light source, which we'll do in a moment. You see, every time I put suction, you see how that moves. That's, that, those ligaments are too loose. So basically what he had is when he, when he had the injury, he had like a partial tear of these ligaments. Just think about like a bad ankle sprain. Okay. In some ankle sprains, sometimes you need to do something more than just, you know, just crutches. I mean, sometimes you have to do, and in this case, we, we tried uh, conservative treatment, but he's continued that pain. So this is a relatively, uh, really a traumatic, simple way to, to, to diagnose the problem. So Because sometimes I put the scope in and it's much worse. So this is really... Um, so the, the, the volar oblique ligament's down there. See, I'm, I'm removing a lot of this synovium. Now we're going to tighten it up. Okay, hold this here right now. And then we're going to probably change portals because I want to see, yeah, see right there, this is the dorsal radial ligament. And 
that looks kind of ratty, so we're going to change portals in a moment, and then we'll do the, and then we can do the shrinkage. So, if you could elaborate, Doctor Bidi, on why you think an MRI is not necessary for this? Well, for one, it's a very small joint. A lot of times, MRIs are you know ordered by well-meaning colleagues who don't know a lot about the trapezium and the carpal joint. So, you know, you think that the test is going to spit out an answer as to why they have pain, and it just doesn't. It just doesn't happen. It's, it's not. You know, we have an MRI right in our center. All right, so. You know, literally 20 feet away from where I saw him, and, and it didn't even come into my mind. But you know, honestly, this is the, one of the multiple issues with our healthcare system is, you know, the, the people who should be ordering studies are the ones who are actually going to do the treatment, um, and that's something that doesn't happen. Just like I don't usually order a cervical MRI because I'd rather my spine specialist colleague make that decision. Let's do RF since we're on the side and then we'll change the portals. So really what you need to do, obviously you always need a plain x-ray because that will show you if there's some arthritis. But what you really need is a, 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 a physical examination by someone experienced in this particular area. That, that's really, it's like anything else in medicine. Okay, so now this is the uh, radio frequency shrinkage probe. Can I get the pedal? Yeah. So you don't want to be too aggressive with this. And again, I'm, you know, some, of the, some of the comments I'm making are from my colleagues. You see, I'm just touching the tissue. Now, now I'm going to do a, another strike. I call this a striping technique. I've described it in the, some of the papers I've written. And the reason being is you want to make sure that in between that area, this has good blood supply for healing. You don't want to paint the whole capsule. Now, already it looks better, tighter. Same with this. We had a few patients comment last week about the BioPro procedure. Yeah and another alternative. Can you elaborate about how this would benefit a patient with basal joint arthritis? Well, arthroscopy is good um, for an earlier stage of arthritis, so based on the x-ray, uh, but I also do it based on their age. So I've seen a lot of 40-year-olds with pain at the base of the thumb, no injury, but I don't necessarily want to go ahead to it with a prosthesis with them. So arthroscopy is a great, and, and that's something I did a, a lot more of, but the implant, in my experience now, has the recovery so much faster that, um, you know, depending on their activities, this guy's a manual worker, so I certainly, and he's, you know, a middle-aged guy, I don't want to put the prosthesis in him, and, 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 and in this case, you, that would never be indicated, because really the joint looks very good. But look how much tighter everything looks. When we got in there, the whole capsule was just redundant. All right, so I'm going to take a picture of that to show him. It's important for the patient to understand. Okay, so that's a really good view right there. See, there are, there are uh, ligaments there. Paul Bedinger from, uh, from Vermont, uh, the resident with me, he was at the Mayo Clinic with Dick Berger who uh, sadly has since passed away, but he's one of the people who really described this arthroscopy. And Paul, uh, in a research study at the Mayo Clinic, described no less than 12 ligaments, I think, 17. Um, so you know, a lot of these ligaments have names, so Obviously, um, but look, see, this looks very good. But, one second. All right. And, okay. Okay, so here's a really good view of it. But look, see, here's this 
redundant right there. You can see this part of the joint. So, shaver, please. Yeah. So Kate knows to grab a scope because I really, sometimes I need two hands. So it's, believe it or not, these small joint arthroscopies are really kind of a two-person uh, surgery. Now, can you explain what you're shaving away? This is a, this, the inflamed synovium. So this is really what causes the pain is this what we call synovitis. So you see this in any joint, whether it be the knee, you have a big swollen knee after an injury, that's the synovium, which secretes the synovial fluid, which is the lubricating fluid of the joints. The synovium can get uh, very inflamed and, and, and secretes a variety of... Uh, Factor is what we call cytokines, not to get too, too technical, but they, that is what's responsible for, for the brain recognizing it as pain. So what I'm going to do is just, you can see I'm already, see right, right below me, already most of the synovitis is uh, resected already, see? Now, had this patient come in at the time of his injury, would you have recommended any other minimally invasive or non-surgical? Um, depends on how significant his, his symptoms were and all, but, um, but yes, the problem is many times these patients are referred to the specialist very late. And this is, anybody who knows me knows I've been battling uh, on this because it's just, the misconception is that you're saving money by it, but the reality is that the specialists often order less tests and because of experience in that area, they understand a little bit more the, the treatment. So if I had seen them early on, I might have simply put them in a, in a cast, a thumb spike, a cast, uh, and let the ligaments heal. But that, that's usually not, that, not the case. They might be given one of these splints, you see, but the splint maybe doesn't even, doesn't really immobilize the base of the thumb very well. Uh, sometimes we can do injections of a biologic, the growth factors to uh, PRP, platelet rich plasma is not, for me, not ideal here because it's too small a joint. So I use an off the shelf product. There's a few of them on the market. I use one called CPM. And we put it in with a little anesthetic under fluoroscopy. So I'm sure I'm in, in perfectly in the joint. See already this looks better. And you can see more transillumination. When we first got in there, you only saw a little bit of orange. The whole joint lit up because I removed the inflamed lining. So this is the technology we kind of, you know, as, as usual, we steal ideas from the knee guys because it's a big joint and. You know, a lot of the, the industry in orthopedics initially is directed many times at knee problems because they're very common. But I, I actually helped design these probes over 20 years ago. Don't ask me if I got any royalties because I'm not very smart about that stuff. <laughs> Ahora eh, tiene preguntas en español, doctor. Sé que ya lo explicó en inglés, pero le están preguntando si este paciente tiene el diagnóstico de risartrosis. No, no, el diagnóstico es eh, eh, dolor persistente en la base del pulgar en el trapecio metacarpiano, que es una articulación muy importante. Imagínate la pinza. ¿Por qué? Muy bien, ¿eh? Pero voy, a, voy a explicar un momento, ok, so ahora luce mucho mejor, ya no hay sinovitis, la cápsula está un poquito apretadito, no le voy a poner un clavito, a veces le pongo un, un clavo para inmovilizar, no, no, no veo la necesidad en este caso, pero sí lo voy a inmovilizar unos, unos cuatro semanas. Y resartrosis no hay, resartrosis que sería que, que tendrías pérdida del cartílago, pero mira, el cartílago luce muy bien. Y voy a tomar la foto para enseñarle al paciente. Ok, okay so ya, ya acabamos.
Tiene saludos, doctor, de el doctor Serrano desde Ecuador. Ah, ecuatorianos, ¿qué? Yo creo que van a la Copa Mundial también, ¿no? Ecuador está, creo, ¿no? Piden que si pudiera otra vez repetir el diagnóstico, por favor. <risa> el diagnóstico era una lesión de, 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 del ligamento eh, palmar oblicuo y también dos, dorso radial de la, del trapecio metacarpiano. En una lesión laboral. Pueden ser, pueden ser lesiones deportivas, una caída. En este caso, un obrero que tuvo, una, y tuvo un dolor persistente. Eh, Hicimos tratamiento conservador inicialmente. Primero también yo lo vi un poco tarde, ya en el proceso. Y, y cuando vemos que no mejora, ya la indicación es esto, que ya ven, son dos, dos huequitos, no hay, no hay ni, ni un punto. ¿Y el paciente estará inmovilizado por cuánto tiempo? Sí, un, un mes. Depende, puede ser tres semanas, depende. Eh, porque quiero que los ligamentos se, se aprieten un poquito. Ok, muchas gracias a todos por sus preguntas. El video va a ser publicado para que lo puedan volver a ver ya que terminamos la cirugía. Gracias. Ahora se están poniendo en, en la página web nosotros también, en sí. doctorvalía.com. Por ahí también le pueden escribir al doctor en la cajita que dice, hazme una pregunta. O en inglés, ask me a question. Thank you. Well,